How's it going? Oh, I'm good. How are you doing? Good. I'm excited to talk to you a little bit. Busy day? Yeah, we're doing some uh, some pictures and videos and liners and all kinds of stuff for the uh, half of me with Thomas Rhett. Nice. Um, yeah, you guys just collaborated with that um, at the CMT Awards. How was that? It was awesome. I mean, just getting to go to the CMT Awards is pretty cool for me. I'm not too far removed from just being a fan, so yeah. getting to perform is a huge deal. And uh, how did that collaboration come to life? Uh, in, in a duck blind. <laughs> we uh, <laughs> he, he was wanting to go duck hunting. I took him to my place in Arkansas a couple of years ago, and we we actually started a song that I recorded called uh, That Was Us, uh, and um, he played some songs for me, and when I heard half of me, and he ended up recording, he, he said he thought of me on it, and just a cool, fun, summer beer drinking song. I guess that's that's my my cup of tea. It is a fun song. I like it. It's catchy. It's one that you want to like, roll your windows down, and cruise down the street, um, oh, yeah. and pretend that you're not driving to work, and you're driving to the beach instead. <laughs> Um, so while well, speaking of the CMT awards, I, I have to ask this, um, how does it feel to know that hearts were breaking all across the country when you walked the red carpet with your girlfriend? It's a good thing I don't know how to work TikTok. I've heard all kind of TikToks are floating around out there. Oh, uh, I'm sure. No, it was, it was great. It was a lot of fun. I, the only date I've ever had to an award show was my mom. She went Aww. to AC awards with me years ago. So it was, it was a lot of fun. That's great. I imagine it's hard to keep your private life private until you're ready to share these things with the world. I don't think you have a private life anymore. When you got when you're on social media, they know everything. They know what kind of car you drive, everything. But that's uh, it's 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 still great too because it's uh, it's how I got my music out to a lot of fans and how a lot of fans got to know me. So it's it's uh, it's been a great opportunity for me to to have a career in country music and you know. I think my mom takes pictures with people at Walmart. You know, they know oh, that's, who is. that's great. She's that's probably awesome. eating it up too. That's awesome. Um, I know you have been pretty busy these last couple months. Uh, the other week you were in Talladega and you performed. I know you grew up watching the races at Talladega. So what makes that race and performing there so special for you? Well, I, where I lived in Jackson was about 20 minutes from Talladega. So we, we grew up, you know, big, big race fans. And and I tell people all the time, you could not like NASCAR, but still enjoy going to Talladega, you know, because it's just such a fun, I, I don't even know how to describe it to somebody. You know, it's just a really cool atmosphere. And uh, my granddaddy Lyndon was a big NASCAR fan. And it's one of the fastest tracks. So, you know, you got to love Talladega. Yeah, I'm sure it's awesome. Never been, but it's a, it's actually on a bucket list. Uh, for me well let me know i'll get you some tickets <laughs> sounds good um now you're playing in the songwriters festival in key west is this going to be your first time uh well yeah i mean having like a big spot in it you know it's uh i did it a couple of years ago uh kind of when i first came to nashville i got asked to go be a part of it, which was great i played like a little hole in the wall bar somewhere you know had like walk through the kitchen to get to the stage uh and now we're, we're playing a show again, taking the whole band down. So it's going to be great. It's such a fun deal, too. Kind of every everywhere you turn, you see somebody you know, some, some singer, songwriter. And hearing the stories behind how some of these big hit songwriters wrote the songs that, you know, we all love has is, is always been pretty cool to me. Yeah. Does it have more of an intimate feel as opposed to just a typical Riley Green concert? Well, yeah. You know, you have flip flops on. <laughs> Casual. No, I love it. It's awesome. I mean, you're seeing all these people walking around. Everybody's having a great time. They're happy to be there. And especially after, you know, the kind of years that we've had here lately, it's nice to be out and just enjoy music again and enjoy being around each other. And, and just, you know, it seems normal. Definitely. Definitely. And the weather in Florida isn't going to be too bad. <laughs> yeah, it won't be bad. It's not going to be snowing. No. Um, I hope we don't have any snow. I'm ready for sunshine. Um. And you have lots more concerts coming up. You just got on Luke Bryan's farm tour. That's awesome. Yeah, no big deal, you know. <laughs> no, that's oh. that's going to be awesome. He's a, he's a lot of fun. And, you know, I imagine there'll be pretty big crowds at those shows. So it'll be a great opportunity for me. Definitely. Um, and you're on his regular tour, right? 
Yeah, farm tour and regular tour. That's what they're calling it. No big deal. I wonder if you call this regular tour as regular tour. (laughs) The raised up right tour is what it's called. But uh, the raised up right regular tour. Um, Yeah, it'll be interesting uh, next time we see you. I'd love to know how the difference of between just this raised up right tour and the the farm tour, like what kind of crowd. um, I can't wait. Yeah, the regular crowd versus the farm crowd. Yeah. Hey, there might be double duty. Going I'm, to I'm sure there'll be some crossover. Yeah, I would imagine so. Um, and I just want to chat about one more thing before I let you go. Um, a couple years ago, you came out with the Golden Saw virtual series, um, but the Golden Saw wasn't just a random name that you came up with. Can you talk a little bit about the Golden Saw and how that has inspired you in your career? Yeah, the Golden Saw was a, a random name that my granddaddy Buford came out with. Uh, we had a sawmill back behind my great grandparents' house, and he painted a saw blade gold and hung it on a wall and called it the Golden Saw Music Hall. And just would like call up his buddies or somebody he knew used to play the banjo or the mandolin or whatever. And I learned to play by just sitting around watching how they made chords, you know. And it was a, a pretty weird thing for me to be sitting there like 11 or 12 years old with a bunch of. 60 70 year old man playing Roy Acuff songs but it definitely helped me get a start in music and helped me kind of get confidence enough to get in front of people and sing and uh started the Golden Saw series on YouTube here you know in, in 2020 just really to kind of shine some new light on that place and also to bring down some of my favorite songwriters and let them tell stories about how they wrote songs so it was a pretty cool deal something that you know I hope we keep keep uh doing and keeps that building kind of going maybe some younger generation will get in there and learn to play like I did. Definitely. It sounds like a special place. Uh, Well, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to me. Um, We'll see you in Atlantic City for a Tidal Wave Fest in August. That would be fun. That would be awesome. Yeah. Well, Well, thank thank you so much.